Good evening. The March 8, 2016 meeting of the Monroe County Legislature will be called to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Alcoffer? Here. Mr. Ancello? Here. Mr. Baroff? Here. Ms. Boyce? Here. Mr. Brew? Here. Mrs. Brown? Here. Dr. Carbone? Here. Mrs. Conley? Here. President Danielli? Here. Mr. Delahanty? Here. Mrs. DeFlorio? Here. Mrs. Droff? Here. Mr. Felder? Mr. Flegler Mitchell? Here. Ms. Harris? Here. Mr. Hebert? Here. Mr. Howland? Here. Ms. Cayley? Here. Mr. Lightfoot? Here. Mr. Marinetti? Here. Mr. Michike? Here. Mr. Morelli? Mr. Moyo? Here. Mr. Rocco? Here. Mr. Shepard? Here. Ms. Taylor? Here. Mr. Turp? Here. Mr. Wilcox? Here. Mr. Zale? Please remain seated. I would like to now introduce Pastor Nate Miller of the Northbridge Church, who has been invited this evening by Legislator Matt Turp. All right, would you bow your heads with me as I pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We recognize that each day is a gift from you. We pray that you would be honored in it. I thank you uh, for our incredible country. I thank you for the freedoms that we can enjoy. I thank you for the many men and women who have served and continue to serve and lead our country. Thank you for our opportunity to come together this evening. God, we pray that you would direct it and guide it. We pray that um, this meeting would be full of wisdom, productivity, and a genuine care and uh, respect for one another. So God, we ask for your help and your guidance here tonight. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor? I would now like to ask Legislator Steve Brew to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Legislator Brew. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> You've received your copy of the journal of day three, February 9th, 2016. Without exception, this journal stands approved as submitted. There is a hearing loop in place tonight to assist those who are hearing impaired and anyone requiring assistance should inquire in the clerk's office. If you have a cellular phone, pager, or other electronic devices in your possession, I would request that you make it inaudible for the duration of the meeting. Thank you for your cooperation. Legislators, uh, the referrals submitted to the legislature for the next committee cycle are in your folders and on your desk. This evening, there are several proclamations scheduled. Madam Clerk. Would representatives for the ancient order of Hibernians please come forward? Also, President Anthony J. Danielli and legislators Tanya Conley and Sean M. Delahanty. Whereas throughout the history of the United States, people from all over the world have brought their traditions and values along with them. Today, the United States is home to people from across the globe and the importance of remembering and sharing one's culture cannot be overstated. Here in Monroe County, the ancient order of Hibernians have helped citizens to celebrate their Irish, Irish heritage. And whereas, formed in New York in 1836, the Ancient Order of Hibernians is the oldest Catholic lay organization in the United States. The original organization dates back to the 16th century in Ireland. The order aids newly arrived Irish, and the many divisions of the order throughout the U.S. have been among the first to welcome new Irish Americans. The Ancient Order of Hibernians helps to preserve all aspects of Irish culture, including art, dance, music, and sports. 
the newcomers can meet some of their own and are introduced to the social atmosphere of the Irish American community. And whereas 2016 marks a particularly important year for Irish Americans as it is the 100th anniversary of the Easter Rising, which nudged Ireland forward on path to self-government. The order continues to educate Monroe County residents about this important moment in the story of Irish independence. They are also active in our community, participating in the St. Patrick's Day Parade each year, as well as honoring Irish Americans, including their fellow Hibernian and their fellow Hibernian and legislator, Sean Delahanty, who was named 2016 Citizen of the Year by St. Patrick's Day Parade Committee. <laughs> and whereas the ancient order of Hibernians has worked tirelessly to celebrate Irish culture and educate citizens across the country, our community is fortunate to have such a great organization here in Monroe County. Now, therefore, we, Anthony J. Daniele, President, Tanya Conley, Legislator, District 18, and Sean M. Delahanty, Legislator, District 11, on behalf of the entire Monroe County Legislature, do hereby recognize and congratulate the ancient order of Hibernians for their celebration of Irish culture and the service they provide to the Amer Irish American community. Congratulations. Well, on behalf of the Ancient Order of Hibernians, we want to thank you for this honor of distinction. Um, we've been a part of our community for m many, many years, um, and it's a wonderful thing that we get involved and try to make a difference for the different organizations that are around, the charities. Uh, a lot of uh, effort and energy gets put into each and every day. Uh, and the group that we have, about 150 active members, um, are doing an awesome job behind the scenes. They're part of a lot of the things uh, like, again, the St. Patrick's Day Parade, uh, the O'Rourke Society, um, the Rochester Police Emerald Society. There's a lot of different folks that are all part of our group. So on behalf of all them and all the little Irish uh, community organizations, uh, we say thank you. Would John Salzer please come forward? Also, President Anthony J. Daniele and legislators Carla F. Boyce and Fred Ancello. Whereas children moving to a new school often find the transition difficult with new teachers and classmates to which they must adapt, the students at the Rochester International Academy carry the additional burden of learning the customs, culture, and language of a new country and require caring and patient adults to help with their acclimation to their new home. We are fortunate that our community has a man like John Salzer who works tirelessly to give a new generation of American kids a helping hand in school. And whereas John is known as Papa to many of the students at the Rochester International Academy because of his warm and supporting demeanor. For over 20 years, John has volunteered at the Jefferson campus and then the RIA teaching math to newly migrated students. John has two children and two grandchildren, but often says that he has many adopted grandchildren from the Kenyan, Nepali, and Somali communities. And whereas devotion and commitment to a cause is not something new for John. He served in the Army Signal Corps during World War II and came home to Rochester to work at Kodak for 40 years as a design and quality control engineer. His passion for volunteering in our community began in the 1980s with a wave of Vietnamese refugees resettling in the Rochester area. He continued his volunteer work with the Third Presbyterian Church, Catholic Family Center and Refugee Resettlement, Lifespan, and the RIA. And whereas, 
Last year's RIA yearbook was dedicated to John, who said, next year I will turn 90 and I would love to spend it right here at the RIA with all the students and staff. John's commitment to service is incredible, and we are proud he calls Monroe County home. Now, therefore, we, Anthony J. Daniele, President, Carla F. Boyce, Legislator District 5, and Fred Anselo, Legislator District 6, on behalf of the entire Monroe County Legislature, do hereby recognize and congratulate John Salzer for his work with students at the Rochester International Academy. Congratulations. This is a, a, a very fine tribute that I'm getting tonight. It approaches the same one that I had at my 90th birthday at uh, Rochester International Academy where I had 300 students uh, sing happy birthday to me and many adult teachers and s students come up and give me hugs. And uh, I told one of the teachers, that never happened to me when I was 17. And when I'm 90, I get hugs. <laughs> uh, but it, it's been a real pleasure working with these children. And uh, it's, it's fun. I try to treat them as my grandchildren. And they, in turn, treat me as their grandfather. And uh, uh, all in all, it's been a terrific experience. And I just hope that I can keep it up for several more years. Thank you. Would the Brockport wrestling team please come forward? Also, President Anthony J. Daniele and legislators Mike Rocco and Mike Sale. Whereas, to win a sectional championship is the crowning achievement for athletes in Monroe County, the culmination of a season's worth of hard work, dedication, and excellence in execution. The boys of the Brockport Blue Devils wrestling team embodied all of these qualities this season when they captured the school's third straight sectional title, scoring 281 points in the championship. The three championships are the only three in Brockport school history. And whereas championship teams are successful due to not only the athletes, but also the commitment and passion of a great coaching staff, Coach Mike Ferris led his team through a long season filled with many obstacles, providing guidance and encouragement to his wrestlers along the way. His efforts were given the ultimate recognition when he was named this season's Section 5 Class A Coach of the Year. And whereas we are proud that these student athletes call Monroe County home, their success both on the mat and in the classroom is a testament to their character and willingness to work hard. The boys of the Brockport wrestling team are role models not only to other high school students, but to everyone in our community. Now, therefore, we, Anthony J. Daniele, President, Mike Rocco, Legislator District 2, and Mike Zale, Legislator District 20, on behalf of the entire Monroe County Legislature, do hereby recognize and congratulate the Brockport wrestling team for, their, for winning their third consecutive Section 5 Class A championship. Congratulations. Well, I couldn't be more proud, so I must say thank you very much for uh, honoring our team. You know, we've been a team for years and years and years. These kids have been wrestling since they were probably, I don't know, five, six, seven, or eight. Our program has turned successful kids in and out year after year, but this is one of those special years with a group of kids that treat people th with respect on and off the mat. So I'd like to thank, uh, thank Dr. Myers, uh, 
to Mr. Hagreen, who is also here, and uh, the legislature who, no who nominated us. Sorry for stuttering. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Coach Fair has certainly recognized our students, but the students need someone to coach them to greatness. So we would be remiss if we did not recognize our amazing coach, Ferris, and all of his staff for working with a talented and incredibly energized and wonderful coaching uh, wrestling team. So thank you, Coach Ferris, for your leadership and your work with our students. Would Jeremiah and Joshua West please come forward? Also, President Anthony J. Daniele and Legislator Ernest S. Flagler Mitchell. The Monroe County Legislature recognizes Jeremiah and Joshua West for their volunteerism, in particular the organization of a water drive for the people of Flint, Michigan. Whereas, it is the sense of this legislature to honor individuals whose volunteer efforts seek to improve the lives of individuals in crisis. And whereas, attendant to such concern and in full accord with longstanding tradition, this legislature is justly proud to honor Jeremiah and Joshua West for their efforts organizing a water drive for the people of Flint, Michigan. And whereas, the people of Flint are facing an unprecedented public health crisis as untreated corrosive river water caused lead to leach from water infrastructure into the city's drinking water, potentially causing ongoing nervous system issues and developmental delays for young people exposed to it. And whereas, in the latest in an, an ongoing series of volunteer efforts, the West Brothers and their Champions of Change organization reached out to the University of Rochester and with volunteer assistance organized a water drive filling moving trucks and a yellow school bus with water to be delivered to a church in Flint for distribution. And whereas their efforts to collect water for Flint are only the latest in a series of community-minded activities organized by the West Brothers, including a homeless party that gathered supplies for local homeless individuals and an after-school program for students at Discovery Charter School that teaches financial literacy and encourages goal-setting and community service. Now, therefore, let it be known that we, Anthony J. Daniele, President, and Ernest Flagler Mitchell, Legislator, District 29, honor Jeremiah and Joshua West on this eighth day of March 2016, express our wishes that their community outreach efforts continue to inspire the people of Monroe County, and present them with a copy of this proclamation, suitably engrossed. Congratulations. Thank you, everyone. We would like to thank the legislator who nominated us for this award. Thank you, everybody, for choosing Champions of Change to get this award. We would we would also we would also like to thank our parents and our little sister Jordan. We look forward to working more closely with the county to help improve Rochester childhood literacy and help kids become change agents in their communities. Thank you. And we would like to thank the Rochester community for their love and support with Champions of Change.
we will now recess for the purpose of a loud noise. Hold on. <coughs> there we go. We will now recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing. I declare open the public hearing on resolution number 52 of 2016 entitled Enacting a Local Law Amending the Monroe County Charter to Create an Office of Public Integrity. There are two speakers registered for this hearing. Our first speaker is Tom Gregory. Please come forward. I don't really have much to say that hasn't been already communicated to you in letters. Um, I know one thing, I have a class I'll be going to right after, after this here. Now I'm gonna wake up in the morning and I'm gonna see what you've done. And I'm confident that this county legislature will have made a law that comports with the Constitution and with state law. Uh, I guess there's ways of approaching county government. One is to think that maybe there's, we should be suspicious and be aware of, of you or to trust you. And I've been with you for 21 years now, and there's nothing that this county legislature has done or the administration has done, tell you the truth, in overall, that has left me with any less faith that I, over, that I had every day in county government. So, uh, uh, but I know you're gonna do right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our last speaker is Barbara Baer. Please come forward. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the legislature. Uh, I, as a private citizen, am here to implore you to consider uh, James Shepard's amendments to this original bill, which is a bill designed to uh, constitute uh, an office of integrity. As I understand the original bill, the county executive whomever he or she will be for many years in the future will have the right to hire and fire the person who is appointed. In my view, actually what you are creating under that bill is another department where the county executive will head the department and will have the final say on uh, what occurs. In my view, if the original bill, as it is stated now, were in effect, it is highly unlikely that the uh, current and past uh, LDC scandal, which some of you may have heard about, uh, would uh, have been stopped. I think that this is really an important moment in Monroe County's history. And the Shepherd Amendments are a simple way to give uh, the public uh, some hope that integrity is gonna be restored to Monroe County. And it certainly gives the county executive the opportunity to appoint the person and, and to make sure that that person, he or she, will be able to investigate and come to some uh, understanding of what actually is happening. Therefore, I hope in a bipartisan way, which is what I know, I know, I hope in a bipartisan way that you will all consider uh, the Shepherd Amendments. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you. I now declare the public hearing closed and reconvene the March 8th, 2016 meeting of the Monroe County Legislature. There are no formal committee reports scheduled for this evening. We will now hold a public forum and we have several speakers registered to address the legislature this evening. Madam Clerk. If you require assistance, a deputy is available to assist you in approaching the lectern. I will call two people forward at one time. Each speaker will have two minutes in which to address the legislature and kindly conclude your remarks when the timer sounds and exit through the back of the chambers. Thank you for your cooperation. Our two speakers tonight are Reverend Alan Newton and Bridget Hurley. <coughs> Good 
Good evening. Money's tight. I think we all understand that in developing a budget, whether it be in for the county or a household, is a combination of must and wants. There are some light, uh, line items which must be funded and others we want to fund if there were only enough money available. I'm here tonight to encourage the legislature to consider moving child care subsidies for working parents from the want list to the must list. If you could take some personal time and just do a simple scan of the internet, you'll see reports about the relationship between child care subsidies and poverty. In very short order, you'll see that child care subsidies results in a reduction of poverty. In a similar way, you'll see that reductions of child care subsidies result in increased poverty. It's no surprise to see that there's a direct relationship between the reduction of funds for these subsidies in Monroe County over the past decade or so and the increase of poverty levels for family with families with children. The Interfaith Children's Collaborative, which I'm a part, will not be going away because like you, we care about this community and we care especially about the children of Monroe County. Increasing the number of children supported by child care subsidies will lift Monroe County up. It will have a measurable impact on all the social ills affecting children and youth in this county. It will get thousands of parents working, which will increase county revenue. Please just take a, a little bit of time to look at the research from around the world. I believe you'll see why child care subsidies for working parents is a must part of the next Monroe County budget. Thank you very much. Good evening. I'm Bridget Hurley from the Children's Agenda, and I'm here once again just to give you an update on state budget activities and particularly how the state budget is going to impact Monroe County's children and families. You, you probably know that Monroe County is proud to be home of one of the largest nurse family partnership programs in the nation. NFP has a long and rich history of evaluation research showing that NFP families go on to be much less likely to use public assistance, criminal justice resources, and are much more likely to succeed in school and life and employment. The county also funds the Building Healthy Children Home Visiting Program, which was developed locally and also has research backing its effectiveness. In our conversations with Rochester area senators and assembly members, we continue to push for more funding for evidence-based home visiting programs for Monroe County's vulnerable families. In particular, we are requesting $5 million for NFP statewide and $2 million for the Nurse Family Partnership Program here in Monroe County each year for the next five years. We are also, of course, advocating for uh, child care subsidies for Monroe County's low-income working families. Specifically, we are requesting $190 million in additional state funding. The governor, in his executive budget, proposed flat funding for child care subsidies. Members of our area delegation that we have spoken with, including Senators Robach and Funky and Assembly Members Morelli and Bronson, are all seeking more funding for child care assistance for local families. This united voice for Monroe County is especially important this year because in 2014, there were federal regulations passed um, that will need to be implemented in 2016 and 17, um, and they unfortunately came with no federal dollars. What's really important is that the implementation of these federal regulations are not paid for with funding cut from the child care subsidy program. Thank you for your attention and concern. This concludes the public forum. At this time, we will recess the March 8, 2016 meeting of the Monroe County Legislature and convene the Pure Waters Administrative Board for the Gates Chilai Ogden Sewer District, <coughs> the Northwest Quadrant Pure Waters District, and the Arondequoit Bay South Central Pure Waters District, and the Rochester Pure Waters District. The clerk will please note the attendance and read the first item on the agenda. QAB Agenda Item 1, Referral 16-0077. Moved by Legislator Boyce and seconded by Legislator Draw. This is to adopt. Is there any discussion? 
All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Aye. Item carries. Next item. PWEB agenda item two, referral 16-0079. Moved by legislator Boyce and seconded by legislator Draw. Again, this is to adopt. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. PWEB agenda item three, referral 16-0081. Moved by Legislator Boyce, seconded by Legislator Draw. Again, to adopt, is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. PWEB Agenda Item 4, Referral 16-0083. Moved by Legislator Boyce, seconded by Legislator Draw. This is to adopt, is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item. PWEB Agenda Item 5, Referral 16-0085. Moved by Legislator Boyce, seconded by Legislator Draw. Again, to adopt, is there any discussion on this referral? There is none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. We will now recess the gates Chilai ogden sewer District, the Northwest Quadrant Pure Waters District, the Rondequoit Bay South Central Pure Waters District, and the Rochester Pure Waters District and adjourn the Pure Waters Administrative Board. The March 8, 2016 <coughs> meeting of the legislature is now reconvened. We'll now consider, we'll proceed with the consideration of local laws. Will the clerk please read the first item on the agenda? Item number one, referral 16-0055. Moved by legislator Connolly, seconded by Legislator Taylor, this is a motion to lift the item from the table. All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? That item carries. Next item. Item number two, referral 16-0055. Moved by Legislator Connolly, seconded by Legislator Taylor. This is a motion to adopt. Is there any discussion on this matter? Legislator Shepard, you have the floor. We have a, well, make the amendment and then we'll need a second. Seconded by Legislator Morelli. And is uh, your staff passing? We have a motion to amend on the floor, moved by Legislator Shepard, seconded by Legislator Morelli. Legislator Shepard. Thank you, sir. I first want to acknowledge the tremendous steps forward that the administration has made relative to establishing an Office of Public Integrity. I think that the steps um, are a significant improvement over past history. However, as an individual who has served at the for the city as the director of the Office of Public Integrity, as someone who is certified as an inspector general while in that capacity, I just felt that I could not, uh, in good heart, compromise relative to what those standards recommend in the establishment of such an office. The National Association of Inspector Generals has been in existence for 20 years and their purpose has been to assist municipalities establish oversight offices in a manner that would be independent, in a manner that fit standards, in a manner that required qualifications, and defined scope. As an outsider to the political arena, I was an observer as I watched Robotrot and the response was the establishment of a hotline. I watched early in the LDC circumstances where Dennis Vaca was asked to 
look into it, and he found irregularities or inconsistencies, but nothing was reported to the public. And then as we establish the Office of Public Integrity, I feel that for us as a legislative body, this is a tremendous opportunity for us to respond to what occurred in a manner that is effective and preventive. I think in analogies, an analogy I offer you is number one, your favorite football team is getting on the field and then one member of the other team goes in the locker room and comes out with a ref uniform. Would you have a problem with that? Or your child gets their first car at 16. Do you want that car to be able to go up and down the road or do you want it to meet the standards of inspection? And then in terms of someone in your family is involved in a crime. Do you want the chief of police to put an investigator on it or his best investigator? And so those are the positions that I feel um, are important in the establishment of the office so that once it's established, we as a legislative body, we as a county government can believe that we are serving the citizens of Monroe County in the best way possible. Thank you. Legislator Shepard, Legislator Morelli. Thank you, Mr. President. I uh, rise in support of the uh, amendment put forth by uh, Legislator she Shepard. And while he said it, um, certainly I don't think I have to add to his words. I'm going to anyway. Um, I first off, as I've said publicly on the floor here, I commend the administration, uh, the uh, county executive, and her deputies for doing an amazing job to uh, add some teeth, as we've said in the past, to this legislation. And again, I commend them. But what we're asking for now is to really put some more depth to it so that we have some better standards. As the county executive said, uh, as she uh, ran last year, that she hopes for to run the most ethical government in the nation. And I agree is certainly something we should all be working toward. And by putting the, this amendment in, I think that's certainly what we aim toward. We continue to add more teeth, make sure that the uh, level of scandal that we saw over the past few years doesn't happen again. Unfortunately, it's not a hypothetical in this county that a county executive would allow her husband to use his poli her political connections to essentially steal from county government. It's not a hypothetical, it happened. People have been accused of it and have since been found guilty. So I would ask that we take into consideration the uh, amendments put forward by Legislator Shepard and really continue to make this a government of which they, we practice the highest ethical standards in the nation. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, Legislator Lightfoot. Well, Mr. President, uh, regards to this uh, uh, amendment, uh, I had a question for the administration. May I ask it at this time? Is it, would you make this message? Is it okay? You have the floor. You may ask the question. So for you, Mr. President, um, to the administration, uh, one of the things that uh, this amendment brought forth to my attention was um, the qualifications for the director. And so my question to the administration is um, in the um, current uh, legislation that's being proposed, do we have uh, any idea of what will qualify um, a director for this, this Department of Integrity? So Legislator Lightfoot, your question is relating to the, uh, to the proposed law, not to the amendment? Uh, it is what the proposed law, and um, I, I just wanted to get some clarity because you know I just um, didn't think that 
I thought that maybe they would have some kind of answer to, you know, that they do have some complications of what they thought the director of public, of public integrity would be. And so I, I'm just a little confused, that's all. I'll allow the question. Generally, though, I, I'd, li I'd like this conversation to stick to the amendment, and then we will have an opportunity to ask questions relative to the uh, uh, general law as well. But Thank you, I, I will allow the question. Through you, Mr. President, uh, the, uh, the um, referral before you today is consistent with the charter and its uh, establishment of other directors, which uh, likewise do not have uh, qualifications listed out uh, in the um, charter itself. Is there any further discussion? Legislator Marionetti. Mr. President, I rise to explain my vote. First, I'd just like to thank Legislator Shepard for offering this amendment, but I just did want to go through the proposed amendment and discuss some of the areas of concern I have uh, in regard to the stated goals, according to a press release from the make that emotion dated February 25th which states that he has concerns that this office is compromised by, by not being given the appropriate independence and oversight to do its job effectively. I can appreciate that concern, and I too wanted to make sure that this office is as effective as it can be. That's why last month, after working in conjunction with County Executive Cheryl Donalfo, I offered an amendment to the original proposal, which added several improvements. We've included a five-year term, appointment by the County Executive with legislative consent, termination for cause, a ban on political activity, subpoena power, and additional protections for whistleblower identity. It appeared we had universal support for those improvements to the local law that we have before us here tonight. However, I believe this amendment is a big step in the wrong direction. As a result of our discussions in Agenda Charter Committee in January, I took a look at the standards offered by the Association of Inspectors General, which have been advocated for by my esteemed colleague. As I look at this amendment tonight, I notice that there's a five-person committee which has been included in the selection and reappointment process for the director. I've looked through these standards. I've looked through the model legislation. I have, I've personally been unable to find any five-person committee mentioned. If I'm missing it, I do apologize. So the maker of the motion, I invite him um, to point me to that once I'm done with my remarks if I am missing it, but I, I have not found it. Continuing with my concerns on this proposed amendment, specifically, the maker of the motion requires 10 years of experience. He also essentially is requiring either a law degree or law enforcement experience, and additionally requiring that the director may not come from Monroe County government or any other entity subject to the authority of the Office of Public Integrity. <coughs> with these words, this amendment has eliminated any candidates who work for the state, any county, town, village, or any agency which has a contractual relationship with Monroe County. Thus, we're left with an applicant pool which lasts experience in New York State government or any sort of local experience. I'd also add that in the guidelines for Inspector General, um, on page five of the document, which is relied on by the maker of the motion, it states, the Inspector General should be selected without regard for political affiliation on the basis of integrity, capability for strong leadership, and demonstrated ability in accounting, auditing, financial analysis, law, management analysis, public administration, or other appropriate fields. To be clear, the Association Inspector General is silent on any other specific qualifications. I found the change from a five-year term to a four-year term particularly interesting given that the Association of Inspector General's model legislation states the Inspector General is appointed for a five-year term. It further states that his intent is to establish a minimum term of office for the Inspector General. The amendment before us tonight changes it from a five-year term, which is currently in the legislation, to a four-year term, and I think the Association of Inspectors General would highly disagree with that change. Additionally, the City of Yonker 
which operates the only other association of inspectors general affiliated office in New York State, appoints their inspector general to a five-year term. It's done by the mayor and confirmed by the city council. This is consistent with our legislation prior to this amendment before it. On the city of Yonkers history of their office of inspector general, they specifically point out that they started with a four-year term and then they changed it to a five-year term to provide greater independence from the mayor's elected team. I just wanted to highlight a few points of disagreement tonight. I too want an office of public integrity which has the ability to independently look at county government to ensure that we're doing the best we can to protect the residents from fraud, waste, abuse, and inefficiency. I started my remarks by acknowledging the edits made to this referral last month the praise last month for these improvements was universal because we all believe that this office must have independence and it must be effective. Unfortunately, this amendment, while its intentions are noble, falls flat. An outside committee injects pol politics into the mix. It's unnecessarily complex and it breaks from the proven model in Yonkers which provides for appointment by a mayor and confirmation by the city council. This amendment tries to move to a four-year term directly in contrast with the recommendation. The amendment also introduces a complex removal process which directly contradicts the recommendations of the Association of Inspectors General, which states in its model legislation, the Inspector General may be removed from office for cause within the five-year appointment by the appointing authority that must report the reasons for removal to the body that approves the appointment. Also concerning, I just want to direct the legislator's attention to D3 of the proposed amendment. That states that the Office of Public Integrity would be responsible to review legislation. Um, I'm not sure about that. I'd be leery of any reduction in this legislator's power to do our job effectively. For those reasons that I've stated, I'll be voting against the amendment tonight. Again, I thank Legislator Shepard for his work on this, but unfortunately, I feel it reduces the office's ability to be independent and instead creates an ineffective model for appointment and reappointment. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Legislator Marionetti. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? Legislator Broth. Thank you. I have a, a couple of questions, but before I go there, I, I do want to um, thank the Majority Leader for his uh, attention to this amendment and the thoughtful responses he had to that. I would note, however, um, that no mention was made of the um, the provision for certification of anyone who is actually selected to be um, the director. In fact, that you know, this person, whoever he may be or she may be, particularly if we were to remove the uh, qualifications for this position, would have no obligation to have any sort of training in, in the future. And I think that might be uh, rather problematic. Uh, I just point out that this um, amendment would, in fact, ex include uh, training uh, provisions for whoever that um, 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 appointee might be. But leaving that aside, uh, through the president, I actually have a, a couple questions for the administration. Um, and my first question for the administration is, has the administration uh, reviewed this amendment since it was made available to them prior to this meeting? Through you, Mr. President, uh, we were not in receipt of the amendment until um, fairly recently and provided to it by the majority. Um, through the chair, uh, through, sorry, through the president, through the administration, my understanding is that uh, the administration received a copy of this proposed amendment uh, last week. Um, and in fact, every member of this body and the administration has been aware of the content of this amendment for uh, a period of time past in the, back in the last week. Is the administration's contention they did not review that? Through you, Mr. President, the w administration didn't receive the amendment until very recently and was provided it by the majority. So again, um, the question has not been answered. Um, through the president, through the administration, has the administration reviewed this amendment? Through you, Mr. President, we have it right in front of us. Through the, through the President, through the Administration, do you need a moment? Through you, Mr. President, no. 
Thank you. Then through the, through the President, through the administration, uh, my question then would be, um, does the administration support the elements of this amendment? Legislator Baroff, I, I guess I would ask the question that we're not asking the administration to vote on this amendment. Oh, no, but they, uh, the, uh, with all due respect, the administration would, in fact, be um, required to fulfill the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the parts of the amendment um, if it were to be passed, and thus their opinion on whether or not this is a good amendment or elements of the amendment might be good is relevant to our decision-making process. They, for indeed, would be the ones to implement it. For you, Mr. President, the uh, passage of this amendment is at the discretion of the legislature. Thank you. Through the President to the administration, does the administration support any of the elements of this amendment? Thank you, Mr. President. The debate and passage of this amendment is at the discretion and the purview of the legislature. Then just for my own clarity, uh, through the President to the administration, is that another way of saying no comment? Yeah, Legislator Baroff, let's move on to the next question. Thank you. Um, then my question would be, um, through um, the President, through the administration, are there any plans in place right now um, for the future um, director of this um, office, if it's established, um, for required or optional training as per the amendment? asked this question before. It's been asked and answered. No, <laughs> excuse me, it has been asked and not answered. Through you, Mr. President, the administration intends to present for confirmation by this body a fully qualified individual for the position. Yeah, I mean, to, to uh, Legislator Broth's point of order, I am allowing the question. However, <coughs> at this point, I want to remind Legislator Broth that we are, we are discussing the amendment. Oh, yes. And so, you know, this amendment speaks to qualifications that uh, Legislator Shepard has proposed. So, I mean, if you have questions about his proposed um, amendment and the qualifications that he is proposing, I would suggest that you uh, direct those questions to Legislator Shepard. I mean, if not, we, we will move on to the main motion at some point, at which point, if you want to ask uh, that type of question, I believe it would be appropriate at that time. Well, it would it not be appropriate, sir, <coughs> if we were to have a uh, amendment before us and it proved to have redundant provisions, that would be relevant to whether or not the amendment should be voted for or against, would it not? And my question is, is there a plan in place? Are there provisions in place already, for example, training for a director of the Office of Public Integrity? If there were plans in place already, then perhaps that element might be redundant. But I don't know. And that I cannot, you know, I, it's difficult to vote for or against the amendment if I don't know if it's redundant or not. And that's why it's relevant. I don't want to speak for the administration, but I will anyway because I'm allowed to. I'm standing up here. It's the power. But, <coughs> but I will say that in the charter, in other positions, as they've already answered, you know, it, it's not general practice in the charter to start stating those types of qualifications under every director or every position. Not to say that they wouldn't be considered, but it would not be appropriate uh, to list all those necessarily. It has not been tradition. It certainly is permissible if we amend oh, as absolutely. such. Um, but it's, it's not a general practice that, that this county. I'm, I'm not asking, I was not asked about qualification, I was asking about training. Same answer, uh, but if, uh, if restate the question and we'll move on. Thank you. Um, through this president, to the administration, there is a provision in the proposed amendment that allows for, in fact requires, training of the uh, Director of Office of Public Integrity. Is there something to that effect already in place for the future to be established office or not. Through you, Mr. President, the administration intends to submit a, the name of a qualified individual on day one, and it will be at the discretion of this body to confirm that individual based on their judgment. With all due respect, Mr. President, I'm not seeing too much transparency here. Um, I'm in, uh, of course, going to vote in favor of this um, amendment. I don't know where the administration stands on the amendment. Um, I guess my final question would be, um, through the president, to the administration, has the administration, for however long it's had the information of this amendment, um, been in consultation with and asking and answering questions with members of the caucus, of the majority caucus?
through you, Mr. President, is the uh, is the uh, legislator asking for a disclosure of the discussion of a caucus meeting? No, sir. I am asking through the president. Um, it has the administration or members of the administration had discussions with the caucus on the amendment. I, I'll the speak to that caucus. as a member of the majority caucus and somebody who did receive this amendment, uh, I believe, yesterday. Is that correct? Friday? And, and we, we have had some offline conversations and questions and whatnot, yes. Thank you. And, and finally, since that is the case, um, through the president, or perhaps to the president, who would prefer to answer the question, um, aside from what was uh, mentioned by the majority leader, and I'm assuming that that's related, and if it's not, I, please feel free to correct me, but aside from anything along those lines already discussed, was there anything else um, discussed that was either um, in support of or in um, contra contradiction to um, the proposed amendment? Anything relevant is what I'm asking, that we should know about as members of the body? Yes. I agree with Legislator Marionetti. I believe you're, you're, you're stretching the rubber band here if you're asking if we've had conversations re oh, regarding I, I, I just, this I, law. Sorry. I would my, say yes. My um, pure intent is simply to say, you know, we are trying to do the right thing here on both sides of the aisle, and I'm, I'm sure that, you know, we don't necessarily uh, come from the same points of view, but I'm hoping that we can actually, you know, have some similar information to make our decision, you know, so we have that, that information. I just want to know if there's any other information out there that we're not aware of that we should be aware of. I would say no. I would I would I would stress that this process that I have been a part of now for the last couple months has been more transparent and more thought has been put into this law from the majority, from the minority, from the administration. There has been open dialogue back and forth, and uh, you know I'm I'm very comfortable that uh, this amendment has been thoughtfully considered, as has the law, and and by a lot of different people. Thank you, Th and that's all I'm here. I, I'm sorry I, I did not get that from the administration when I was getting some rather opaque responses, but thank you for your answer, I appreciate that. Thank you, Legislator Baroth. Is there any further discussion? There being none, Madam Clerk, a roll call vote on the amendment. <coughs> on the amendment, Mr. Marionetti. Ms. Cayley. Mr. Alcoffer. Mr. Ancelo. Mr. Baroth. Ms. Boyce, Mr. Brew, Mrs. Brown, Dr. Carbone, Mrs. Conley, Mr. Delahanty, Mrs. DeFlorio, Mrs. Draw, Mr. Felder, Mr. Flagler Mitchell, Ms. Harris, Mr. Hebert. Mr. Howland, Mr. Lightfoot, Mr. Michike, Mr. Morelli, Mr. Moyo, Mr. Rocco, Mr. Shepard, Ms. Taylor, Mr. Turf, Mr. Wilcox, Mr. Zale, President Daniele. No. 10 to 19, amendment fails. We will now move back to the main motion, which is the consideration of the local law enacting or amending the Monroe County Charter to create the Office of Public Integrity. On the main motion, is there any discussion? Legislator Page. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> President. I rise to explain my vote. Um, it would be an odd day in the county if we didn't have an amendment or two on something as important as this issue. And so um, I do appreciate what has just happened in here, regardless of whether or not we thought we should have had extra debate on this. It was informational and it was as it should be. Also, I um, applaud the establishment of the Office of Public Integrity and I applaud the our new county executive for pushing this forward and then, then having the wherewithal to, uh, to um, listen to other concerns and make amendments initially. If we had a perfect county, we wouldn't even need this office, but we know from the past that we don't quite have a perfect county. Uh, and as we accepted um, the integration of the Office of Public Integrity and embraced it, 
in the beginning, I think that some of us were having a little less information than others. And so that's, that is, uh, has been a learning experience for us as well, because prior to this introduction, I did not have the information that was presented to us by my colleague, um, Mr. Shepard. And so it has changed my opinion on how this law should look. And um, I will be supporting this, but I do feel that it still lacks some of the teeth that has been pointed out. And so therefore, what I challenge or charge this legislature, um, that we are creating a cost, we are creating a new position in office, and it's not as strong as we would hope it to be. So for us as legislators, we are now charged with keeping everyone's feet to the fire that this office, this new director, that the cost is maintained, that the integrity is maintained, and that it does what we want it to do, not what people are afraid it won't do. So therefore, I will be supporting this, uh, and um, thank you. Thank you, Legislator Fraley. Legislator Flagler Mitchell. <coughs> My vote as well. Um, I want to thank, uh, thank you, Mr. President, and as well as the county executives for coming in and uh, putting this office together. Um, I was here a year ago, and, and our recommendations probably would not have been heard. And I see that she has implemented some of our recommendations, so we thank you for that. And I will be in support of this bill, with it not being perfect, but we can always work together to try to build more teeth. So I will be voting yes on this proposal. Thank you, Legislator. Legislator Feldman. I too will be voting in favor of the bill with certain reservations. I just don't want to make the perfect the enemy of the good. Um, I would encourage the administration as you go forth and put together and, and find the person and, and to find the position that you take in strong consideration in in the strong consideration that the, the uh, some of the principles that we've outlined in terms of what the individual needs to have to be able to do the job effectively. Uh, and I do applaud the county executive who talked about it during the campaign. We said it at, at, at her. Uh, acceptance speech when she was um, sworn in, that she was going to have an ethical administration, and I believe um, that you are on the right path. And so I do encourage you that as you go forward, please try to make sure that this is independent. The people are watching. We've had enough scandal. It makes us all look bad, both sides of the aisle. It doesn't matter whether Democrats or Republicans. And so we want to make sure that we really have a, an ethical and transparent government that we all can be proud of. Thank you, Legislator Felder. Legislator Harris. Thank you very much. I would like to applaud the administration for this positive step forward for our county. Um, I know this process has been very difficult for all of us, as well as the community. I vote tonight, I will be voting yes for optimism. I'm optimi I have optimism that we will uh, move forward from this and we will all work together to make this county more ethical. Thank you, Legislator Harris. Any further discussion? There being none, uh, Madam Clerk, the roll call vote, please. <coughs> On the main motion, Mr. Marionetti. Yes. Ms. Cayley. Yes. Mr. Alcoffer. Yes. Mr. Ancello. Yes. Mr. Barra. Yes. Ms. Boyce. Yes. Mr. Brew. Yes. Mrs. Brown. Yes. Dr. Carbone. Yes. Mrs. Conley. Mr. Delahanty? Yes. Mrs. DeFlorio? Yes. Mrs. Draw? Yes. Mr. Felder? Yes. Mr. Flagler Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Harris? Yes. Mr. Heber? Yes. Mr. Howland? Yes. Mr. Lightfoot? Yes. Mr. Michike? Yes. Mr. Morelli? Yes. Mr. Moyo? Mr. Rocco, Mr. Shepard, Ms. Taylor, Mr. Turp, Mr. Wilcox, Mr. Zale, President Daniele. Yes. 28 to 1 local law passes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We will now proceed with consideration of motions, resolutions, and notices. 
Legislator Marionetti. Thank you. Mr. President, I rise to make a motion that the remainder of the items be moved. Those would be items three through 36 uh, through one vote. I have a motion to move the remainder of the agenda <coughs> by Legislator Marionetti, seconded by Legislator Kaley. So we will be voting on items number three through item number 36. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposition? Item carried. There being no unfinished business, Legislator Marionetti. Thank you, Mr. President. We stand adjourned until 6 p.m. Tuesday, April 12, 2016.